Welcome back to PSC Tech Bytes. Starting from today, I want to cover a new topic, which will be the creation of an automated provisioning solution using Microsoft 365. The functional requirements, which I will satisfy with the solution that I will explain you, will be the following ones. First of all, there will be a form to submit a provisioning request from an end-user perspective. Then there will be an approval flow to approve the request to provision a site. Then we will have the actual provisioning of the site, which will be automated, and there will be, at the end, a notification of the outcome of the provisioning to the requester user. From a technological perspective, the landscape, the technology landscape, will be based on SharePoint Framework to build the UI, on Microsoft Teams to host the UI of the solution, on Microsoft Power Automate, also known as Microsoft Flow, to build the approval flow, as well as, at the end, uh, the provisioning of the solution using Microsoft Azure in the back end. From a serious perspective, here are the steps uh, that I will cover in uh, multiple videos that will be recorded in the PSC Step Byte uh, uh, YouTube channel. The first video, this one, will be about the information architecture of the solution. The next one will be about building the UI using SharePoint Framework. The third episode will be about how to use Microsoft Power Automate to create the approval flow. Then there will be a step about how to do the actual provisioning within an Azure function. And lastly, we will see how to create the provisioning templates that we want to provision. So today, let's talk about the information architecture. And here we will have one infrastructure set collection in which I will create a document library to store the provisioning templates and a list to store all of the requests for provisioning of sites. So let's move to the demo environment and let's see how to create our custom solution. So here we are in the provisioning infrastructure site, which is just the modern team site that I created and in which I will store information about what are the provisioning templates that I want to use for provisioning sites, as well as to collect the list of provisioning requests for my users. In order to do that, I created inside the settings of my uh, team site, if I go to view all the site settings, in the site content types, I have uh, a custom group, which are the provisioning content types, and there I have a provisioning request. The provisioning request is made of a bunch of few um, custom site columns, like the site owners, which will be a person or group field, which will allow multiple people in there, the site members to configure the members of the site, the site type, which can be a communication site or a team site or whatever else in the future, a target organization, if you want to target your site, for example, in a specific hub or in a specific uh, uh, company-wide organization, as well as the provisioning template that you will uh, uh, apply to the target site that will be created and provisioned for you, as well as the provisioning status, which is a choice field in which you can define if the site is just pending the provisioning request, or if it is under provisioning, or if it is provisioned, or eventually if it failed while provisioning. And last but not least, I have a site URL, which will be the URL of the provisioning site once it will be ready. So this is by the uh, item that I will use whenever I will want to create to provision a new site uh, through the application. Moreover, I have a provisioning templates library in which I simply store the .pmp provisioning template file, which will uh, represent my different provisioning templates. So when I want to make a new provisioning request, I will simply have to create a new item in this list. And right now I'm just using the out of the box UI of SharePoint Online, the modern UI. And I will provide a title for my site, a set of owners, for example, myself here, as well as maybe someone else in my organization. So this one, and let's say, for example, my buddy Guido as well as some site members like, for example, uh, Jessica, and so on and so forth. I will select if it is a communication or a team site. I will select the target organization, which can be the HR organization in my company, and I will have to provide the provisioning template. Of course, this UI is not the very best ever, and that's why in the upcoming episodes of this series of videos, I will also define using SharePoint Framework a custom UI to create a new provisioning request instance. And of course, there will be also the status field, as I said, and the site URL, which will not be present in the add new item in the form to add a new request, but they will be used to report back 
to the user what is the status of the provisioning and what is the URL of the provisioned site. Once you are ready with that, you can simply use PowerShell to connect with Connect PMP Online to the target site, which is this one, and you can export the provisioning template of this site, providing, of course, your credentials, and my scenario will be credentials that I have in my credential store. And once you have done that, you will simply need to get the PMP provisioning template for the site. You can store it wherever you want. For example, for me, it will be infrastructure site.pmp. And I will simply select to manage the handlers for fields, for content types, and for lists, because those are the ones that I want to use. And so by doing that, I will have a simplified provisioning template with just the information architecture of what I really need in my solution. By doing that, I will extract my provisioning template and I will be able to use it whenever I will deploy my automated provisioning solution onto a target tenant, which can be the target tenant of a customer or, or the real target tenant in my company if right now I'm working in a developer tenant and I will move everything else when it will be ready onto the test or Q&A and then to the production environment of my business, of my company. And that's it. From the information architecture perspective, we simply need a document library and a custom list to store the provisioning requests. Next episode, we will see how to create the SharePoint Framework UI to feed this uh, list of requests uh, in the infrastructural site collection. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed step one of five of this new tutorial and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next step. Thank you.